the glenning, yeah. Darkness swept go. over me as I left the glittering lights in the village behind me and headed for the ominous shadows of the chasms. No, no, no. As I entered the chasms, it struck me how much darker it was in there. The shadows were black as ink, and although I tried not to be afraid, I couldn't help but shiver. Was it the darkness that frightened the villagers as well, or was it something else? I would be scared of this darkness, but everything's like purpley. It's not all dark. Let's do the flower. Fog away. It's fast trap. I don't know what that was, but we're just gonna like bypass it and pretend it doesn't Maddie? even Hi. I'm glad you came. Sorry about back there. I just get so frustrated. They cling so desperately to what they know. Won't ever do anything new. It feels better when Fred is around. But... I told Madeline I didn't mind. And I asked her what she was doing with the book. Oh, this? These writings? It's like a secret language. They are done by people who left the village long ago. They're called the Strays. But no one wants to talk about them. I started translating their language with help from a stray book that Fred found. This one says, Don't move when the eye is open, I think. I wonder what it means. Whatever. Don't we should get going. Why don't you take me on your back? It'll be faster if you carry me. I used to piggyback on Fred all the time. Turn around and I'll hop up. <laughs> You're not going to drop me, right? Okay, let's go. Madeline climbed up on my back, and with the suit on, I could barely feel the extra weight. The winding, narrow tunnels felt like they were closing in on me. They were oddly long and twisting, almost like someone or something had dug them out. With Maddie on my back, I had to be careful not to bump her head on the ceiling. No, she don't want to hit her head off the ceiling. It's a stupid flower again. I already used two, so maybe I don't need another one. Oh, we're dead. This is like a challenge worth. Ow. That's spiked. Up, 
rub it away. So over the teeth. Under the teeth. Zap that as soon as possible. Don't hit it. 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 Oh. This is so difficult. God, like I'm trying to. start anew. The Straits were ordinary people living in the village long ago. They disagreed with the old traditions and left to form their own village, or they were thrown out for misbehaving. The stories differ a bit. Off the wall, down to the depths. <laughs> Whee. Put this one low, around the left. Put this one low, left. Put this one, and like a. There we go. That's better. Seemingly bottomless pits loomed below us, everywhere in the cave. The further we got, the more I felt like what faint light existed down there was getting fainter. I was really glad that I wasn't alone. Uh, so what do I have to like? Oh. I'd never heard a creature sounding as terrifying, and I imagined it wouldn't be happy about the visitors. Whoa, 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 whoa. Touchdown. We're flying to that one. See that glowing plant over there? 
I bet something will happen if you use your grapple on it. Told you so. <laughs> what does it do? Oh, like lights up. Dirty and plant. Turn my gun. And touchdown. It is really dark down there. You're not scared, are you? Cause I'm not. Install lights down here, but we have plants that light up. It's like finding Nemo. Has been with my people since the first villager was born. He helped us build the village, taught us how to speak, and helps us with everything. He taught me how to read and write as well. That's how I could learn to read the writing on the walls. What? Uh, where do we go now? To restart all of that. Oh my god, that'd be crazy. Why do you have to restart this whole thing? I don't know where to go from there. Grab it. are still lit. Run. Light up. What do we do from here? Mm -hmm. 
God, man, that is difficult. Place we just came from. So then what the, the uh, hold up on a second. She was the, the flyer. She's the one that they would, you know, get and throw into the air. She was this cute, petite, little, tiny little girl with uh, just a head full of long blonde hair. She wasn't afraid of heights. In fact, she wasn't really afraid of anything. We had noticed she had just gotten weak. I said, what's the matter with you? I said, you're a tumbler. You can <laughs> tumble and do backflips. It progressed from that to uh, she fainted a couple times. So I took her into the doctor the next day and they immediately sent us to Texas Children's Hospital. She was just, from the moment I met her, she was about 11 years old, she just had a sort of magical presence about her, and nothing would keep that girl down. Victoria was diagnosed at the age of 11 and a half with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In today's world, we cure, cure, go away forever, about 80% of children. In 1965, we cured 5% of children. So the improvement is unbelievable. And Victoria actually had a particular subtype of ALL that the cure rate should have even been better than that. Victoria's treatment was to take two and a half years. And at the end of two and a half years of chemo, Victoria was to be finished with her treatment. Okay, thank you. Now I'm gonna hand this over to Dr. Frickback and see what she has to say. Well, what's, what's your name again? Uh, my name is um, Bunny McBunkbunk. Well, Bunny McBunkbunk, today our breaking story is about a little dog named Arfie. The first time I met Victoria, we were doing a radiothon at a radio station in Houston, Texas. She was very full of energy and was already considered a long-term survivor of leukemia. At the end of two and a half years, when Victoria's treatment was over, they performed another spinal tap and a bone marrow test. Joellen called me uh, and she had just the worst news ever, and that is that Victoria's cancer had returned. Victoria at that time decided she was going to fight and entered the hospital for what would turn out to be an extremely long stay. And he asked her at that time, he said, Victoria, do you like to play video games? She said, I love to play video games. So I put the word out to a website that I worked with called Sarcastic Gamer, and the online community responded in droves. What I expected to be a couple of games that might come from here and there instead turned out to be things coming from all over the world. So much so that it became sort of overwhelming. Tori had to end up giving it away to other kids who were also stuck in the hospital. And she made it through, and nine months later, she relapsed again. 
So this was three times she was told that she had cancer. She couldn't be around other people that could have any infections. You know, she, when she was out, she had to wear her masks. During this time, Victoria contracted a fungal infection, which is from a uh, very low uh, immune system. And she had little to no immune system left. And I asked her what she wanted for Christmas. Uh, and she said, I'd really just like to get out of this hospital and go see Christmas lights. Christmas lights are something my family and I go see together all the time, and I can't even leave to go see Christmas lights. And after about 10 minutes, we rolled back upstairs to her room, and we had our picture made in front of a little Christmas tree. And I said goodbye. Uh, and that picture is uh, one of my most prized possessions because uh, it was taken just moments before I saw my friend for the last time. And Victoria passed away before I could get back to see her. Victoria passed away on January 21st, 2008, after a four-year battle with leukemia, failed bone marrow transplants, and fungal infections. It was as a result of Tori's death, sitting at her funeral, that I made up my mind that I needed to be doing this, not just a couple days a year with a radiothon, that I needed to be doing this with my life. Doc wanted to do something special for Victoria in memory of Victoria. And he came up with a fundraiser called Extra Life. And this fundraiser would be for the gaming community. It just occurred to me that gamers should be able to do the things they love to, uh, to help sick and injured kids as well. And so Extra Life was born. 1,200 gamers showed up on October 15th, 2008. With this year's Extra Life Gaming Marathon, we're helping save kids' lives. You don't even have to be a crime-fighting superhero. Each and every year afterwards, it continued to grow. Gamers responded by being able to uh, game for their local hospitals. We've grown since 2010 from a small group of over 4,000 gamers to a massive movement comprised of over 50,000 gamers who helped raise over $6.1 million in 2014 alone. Video games are like the number one form of entertainment on planet Earth, have been now for quite a while. Anyone could be involved in Extra Life. Gamers aren't that pale kid in mom and dad's basement. They're mom and dads, they're aunts and uncles. A young child, to an older adult, to a grandparent. You can take all that fun of playing games for 24 hours and reach out to your friends and bring them to your environment. Or if you want to play a board game, a card game. The funds that Extra Lifers raise can go to a variety of purposes in the local area at the local hospital. So maybe your extra $20 or your extra $50 goes to curing 87% of children with leukemia. It might buy an isolate for a baby that is born the size of a cell phone and has to fight for its life. I can guarantee you that with that money goes directly back to these children. To keep this from happening, again, to someone else's child. Getting involved with Extra Life is really simple. You just have to go to the website at extra-life.org, put in a few details in there, join a team if you'd like to, or create one. After that, it's as simple as fundraising with your friends and family. Let them know why you are doing this. They should know that the money you raise is going to stay local in your community. We never will truly lose Victoria because she will live for all of us through this. It started with a little girl in Orange, Texas. And I think that's all we have to say for today. All we have to say today, so... So we'll see, see you tomorrow, tomorrow at on. News at... Whatever, Whatever time, time it is. is. At Victoria's house. Thank Bye. You. Yeah.